what we have sitting here is uh, an example of the XO laptop uh, made by the One Laptop Per Child Foundation. So uh, you can see the, the laptop is very tiny. I don't know if you can get the sense of scale, um, but my hands are not, you know, the size of basketballs. So this is what it normally looks like when it's closed. Um, it's got the logo on it. Um, it's got a front and a back and a carrying handle. Very durable. Um, and so to open it, you just pop the little antennas up and open it up, and that's that. And it has another operational mode, which is, um, oops, which is you can spin the screen around and fold it down like this, and then use the directional controls and the buttons and whatnot. There are things you can do with it, like use it as an ebook reader or whatever, you know, it folds down flat like this. This part here, this is the trackpad, here are the buttons. I don't know what these two things do. One of the disadvantages of not growing up in an impoverished country is that your XO laptop doesn't come with documentation. There are portions of this laptop that I haven't figured out yet, mostly because I don't have time, but also probably because I'm not as smart as an eight-year-old. They're actually getting um, a version of Linux. I don't know which distribution uh, they started from, but it's basically a custom um, windowing system uh, on top of a Linux kernel. So the point of the interface is uh, to, make the, to make the laptop usable to kids. And so the entire thing is, uh, is picture heavy, but the idea is um, that this is, that kids can see this as a toy and oh, I can click this picture and I can click this picture and they learn sort of the symbology of the, of the user interface and that it all comes together in sort of an intuition for them. So this is the screen that you see when you boot it up. Um, this is basically just sort of the, the logo for the, the computer and the control menu to reboot, shut down, or, or whatever. Around the circle here, um, you can see an icon for each of the running applications. The journal is always running. Um, it records everything you do with the computer. Um, it, there's an interesting sort of uh, different way of interacting with files that goes with with the the XO laptop. Um, you don't save them in folders. You don't run applications and create documents and save them in folders. What you do is you do activities, and the activities are recorded in your journal. So if you were working on something in the in the turtle in the logo turtle drawing program, um, and you want to go back to it later, you'd go to your journal and look up what you were looking on or what you were working on and reopen it, and then you can work on it more. So actually, I'll go ahead and open the turtle. Um, turtle art. It's basically a, you know, 25 years updated edition of uh, the logo drawing program. And this, the reason I wanted to show you this is because it's kind of interesting. It's not exactly data flow, but it's sort of reminiscent of the NXT robot stuff works. And there are multiple palettes here, basic moves, um, pen tools, pen up, pen down. You can set the color, the thickness, things like that. Uh, math operations, numeric and logical. Flow control, you can do weights, you can do repeats, you can do if then. Uh, it basically has all the, the rudimentary blocks of, um, of a programming language, including stacks and uh, a couple registers you can store variables in. So I'm gonna go ahead and open one of these examples that they have. I haven't actually looked at this one before. Um, I don't know if you can see the color on the screen real well in the sunlight here, but uh, this is not a background picture. This is the actual um, output of the activity when it was last run. I'm going to go ahead and get myself a clean block here. And I'm going to click it to clear the screen. And then I'm going to come over here. And uh, to describe the program real quick, they're going to set the pen size and they're going to do a, a repeating thing here. Over here are the blocks that go into the loop. Um, they store something, uh, set the shade of the pen, and then they're going to jump over here to this stack. So this is sort of like a go sub. And so it'll run the stack and then uh, return from the subroutine and do the repeat. So I'm gonna click over here on set pen size to start it, um, but it's gonna run all this code. And so as I click it, we will see the magic happen. And it looks like I've picked a fairly slow one. Something else that they would be doing with this that I haven't played much with because I'm the only person I knew who has one of these, is these have built-in wireless networking. And if you have a bunch of, of XO laptops together, they will actually 
in in a semi-automatic way assemble sort of what they call a mesh network and the way the operating system works when you're doing an activity you can just click up in the upper right and share with whoever you want i think you can share it with your entire neighborhood you can share it with an individual person and uh i haven't played with it because i haven't met another xo laptop but my so you're I, the only the only geek in your neighborhood. i am the only person that i've even seen carrying one of these around well there's built-in chat um there's a built-in web browser but we don't have internet access up right now uh this is kind of neat camera. as i recall there's a built-in camera right over here is that what you're doing um and so you can take videos and make sound recordings of yourself. This is not the fastest computer in the world. So actually right there, um, you can, the color's probably really washed out by the sun, but, but you can hopefully see that it's at least showing the live picture off the camera and we could take a photo if we wanted to. Um, you can record video, you can record audio, and then these clips will actually show up um, elsewhere in other activities. But, yeah, so $200 laptop does that. Um, there's painting, there's a, there's a thing called Pippi. I shouldn't have launched this because I don't know Python, but Pippi is a, is a, uh, is a Python interpreter. A lot of the programs that you see here are actually written behind the scenes in Python. And so one of the things that the foundation wanted to do was give the kids the tools to edit the applications that are shipped with the machine. And what better way to do that, than, I guess, than to do them in Python. I unfortunately don't know Python, but perhaps I could learn it using my one laptop per child XO laptop. Maybe we can, maybe we can click a, um, let's, get, let's see what the Fibonacci is. Oh, well, that's fairly simple. And if we click run, I bet you it will print the Fibonacci sequence. You can record sound, you can use this as a, like, acoustic measurement device. And you can do, um, I only played with this real briefly, but so I think... it has a microphone? Yeah, it has... Talking? One of those two might be the microphone. Um, it's the same thing that they use for audio recording, but obviously you can see here as I'm talking... It's picking up the sound waves and graphing them there. Um, you can perform uh, some frequency measurements, you can check for a bias, um, you can set it for DC mode, which will be very uninteresting at this point. Um, it's not exactly clear to me what DC mode would mean for uh, sound recording. Um, you can log the data. So it so it's a way for the kids to learn about computers, it's a way for them to communicate with each other, it's a way for them to be, I don't know, exposed to, uh, exposed to measurement and, <laughs> measurement and automation concepts, one would hope. Oh, also, uh, of course, it, it wouldn't be Linux without a command prompt. So there's our, there's our terminal. Uh, R, M... <laughs> LS. I desperately, desperately want an iPhone, and um, and I, but I feel I would feel bad about spending that much money on something. I've since changed my mind. I, I really, really want an iPhone for real now. But at the time, I thought that what I could do is spend the same same amount of money because this was you could get this for four hundred dollars by giving a two hundred dollar donation to donate a laptop to some kid in Bulgaria or wherever it is that they end up sending it and then they would give you the opportunity to buy one for yourself for two hundred dollars whereas normally you can't get them so for the same amount of money approximately as what an iPhone would cost um, I could I guess feel magnanimous and and like I was doing something to help the world uh, <laughs> whether I've actually done anything to help the world or whether I've offset the normal damage I do to the world in my daily life uh, we can debate that. You know, I've always wanted to open a pizza place and call it Fibonacci's Pizza. I'll start the video with that statement. And, and, and now I can. <laughs>